Hello, everyone. Today we will continue to introduce high voltage load switches. We will mainly cover four aspects. The first is structure characteristics of air blast load switches. Second is the structure characteristic of Wacom load switches. Third is the structure characteristics of SF6 load switches, and fourth is the usage knowledge of load switches. First, let's look at the structure characteristics of air blast load switches. Using the piston and the cylinder during the braking process, relative motion compresses the air, and then using the compressed air to extinguish the arc, is called an air blast load switch. By increasing the piston and cylinder volume to increase the amount of in compressed air. And the braking capacity can be improved. Its structure is complex, and the operating power is large. Air blast low switches can be divided into rotating structure and direct action structure. The rotating structure load switch completes closing and isolation through the swing of knife switch. When closing, the arc knife swings. And inserts into the air chamber. When braking, it relies on compressed air to extinguish the arc. As shown in the figure, this is the rotating structure of blast air blast high voltage load switch. The load switch mainly consists of an isolating switch and a fuse. The isolating part、uh, has an arc extinguishing function. Its upper insulator is a simple. Arc extinguishing chamber. It not only acts as a support insulator, but also also internally, is a cylinder equipped with an operating mechanism. The piston driven by the main shaft functions similarly to a pump. The upper part of the insulator is equipped with an isolating nozzle and a st static arc contact. When the low switch is opened, the arc contact at one end of the knife switch and the static arc contact on the insulator generate an arc. Due to the operation of the main shaft, during opening, the main shaft drives the piston to compress the air into the cylinder. The air is expired from the nozzle. Forming a longitudinal blow into the arc, extinguishing it quickly. Of course, when opening, the rapid elongation of the arc and the electromagnetic blowout effect of the current pass itself also help extinguish the arc. Next, let's look at the direct action structure of the low switch. In this structure, the current carrying and arc extinguishing are separated. Compressed air is provided by the generating mechanism to provide compressed power by direct movement up and down of the conductive rod, and the arc is extinguished by the compressed air. Its structure, as shown in the figure, the basic structure includes conductive part and insulating part, and the opening mechanism part. The lower part is the fuse. The upper part is the low switch itself. For the air blast low switch to improve the arc extinguishing effect, some use a hybrid arc extinguishing principle such as air blast plus gas generation. Next, we will introduce the Volcom low switch. The Volcom low switch uses a Volcom arc extinguishing chamber as an arc extinguishing device. It has the characteristics of high braking current capacity and suitability for frequent operations. Its arc extinguishing chamber is simpler than that of Volcom circuit breakers, simpler in structure with a smaller diameter. As shown in the figure, to induce the height of low switch, the Volcom arc extinguishing chamber. Two is fixed on the isolating knife one. 
The main shaft four can operate the isolating operation shaft three, and the vacuum arc extinguishing chamber operation shaft five. When closing, shaft three drives the isolating knife to close first. The vacuum arc extinguishing chamber, under the action of the over travel spring, close later when opening. The vacuum arc extinguishing chamber, under the action of the over travel spring, quicks opens, and the isolating knife follows to open. As shown in the figure, the indoor vacuum load switch uses an interlock structure. It interlocks the vacuum arc extinguishing chamber and the isolating knife through mechanical interlocking to ensure both elements operate in the correct sequence. In structure, mainly consists of the isolating switch one, the vacuum arc extinguisher chamber two, and the grounding switch four. Among them, the vacuum arc extinguishing chamber is operated by the spring mechanism three. Next, we will introduce the SF six low switch. The SF six low switch use the SF six gas as insulation and arc extinguishing medium in the low switch. It is widely used in urban and rural networks. According to the arc extinguishing principle, it can be divided into arc shoot type, ionization grid type, permanent magnet arc rotating type, and air blast type. Among them, the air blast type is more commonly used. According to the action characteristics, it is divided into direction, act, direct action, and rotary types. Arc shoot type usually uses a rotary structure to extinguish the arc with arc shoots, using rotation to achieve breaking, isolation, and ground positions. Compact structure. Ionization grid type. The Arc extinguishing chamber is separated, separate housing. The arc extinguishing medium, the insulation medium, are separated within the equipment. Its advantage is that even if the outer housing is damaged, it can still maintain full breaking capacity. Rotary arc type utilizes current combined with a permanent magnet to make the arc rotate around the fixed contact. The arc is elongated and cooled and extinguished when the current passes through zero. Up and down direct action air blast type. The arc extinguishing chamber is placed in a sealed housing filled with SF6 gas at the bottom of the metal housing. A safety valve is installed. The moving contact is operated by a quick operation mechanism, unaffected by the operator. The grounding switch has short circuit losing capacity. Rotary air blast type, through the moving contact, the rotating and the compressing air, forming double breaking points to achieve breaking and isolation. Some also achieve grounding function. The rotating moving contact form double breaking points. Finally, we will introduce the user's knowledge of low switches. When adjusting the low switch, pay attention to the following points. First, when closing the low switch, the auxiliary knife switch should close fast. The main knife switch should close later. When opening, the main knife switch should open first, and the auxiliary knife switch should open later. When closing the low switch, the main fixed contact should reliably contact the main blades. When opening the three-phase arc extinguishing blades, should simultaneously separate it from the fixed arc extinguishing contacts. In the arc extinguishing chamber, the organic insulation material that generates gas should be intact without tracks. The arc extinguishing contact, the gap between the arc extinguishing contact and chamber, should meet the requirements. The low switch, the synchronization of three-phase contact engagement, and the contact gap and opening angle should meet the product technical 
specifications. Five, when closing, the small plug on the main knife switch should fit into the nozzle of the ex arc extinguishing device. There should be no severe collusion with the nozzle. This concludes the content of today's lesson. Thank you, everyone.